sir shall we start the program yeah up to you sir uh, yes 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 if, if people, uh... yes yes the people will join uh, mm -hmm. uh, good morning to all the students the participants and the guests here we have a excellent subject the topic what an accountant has to do what are the, his duties statutory duties and then other you know uh, the duties as an accountant he's doing multiple jobs actually that's the reason he's actually what they're saying that uh, i don't know suprasad may have to agree with me what i read sometime back every chartered accountant needs 10 accountants because for them to minimum, assist minimum. <laughs> yeah me, me. so that is the reason what i'm trying to say that what we are called as a non-qualified accountants but many of that so we have a lot of career opportunities and then supra sadgaru we have a wonderful speaker who is a actually academician still he is doing the courses he is now pursuing uh, indian school of business as a you know, advanced management uh, studies. And he's also a rank holder in chartered accountant. And he's uh, you know, qualified as a caste accountant and many qualifications. And more than that, he's a regular speaker for chartered accountants and so many professionals. You, you may not be, you know, sorry, it is not a surprise. He would have conducted more than 200 seminars. So that's the reason when we have asked him immediately, he, he I mean, accepted our request to organize the program for the budding accountants. So now, may I request our uh, student, her name is Vijaya. I, I mean, she will be seven. Yeah, seven. Uh, may I request uh, Vijaya to introduce the speaker, please? Yeah, so yeah. good morning yeah. to all. And first of all, thank you so for giving me this opportunity to introduce our speaker. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to invite our chief, chief guest, Mr. C.A. A. Sivaprasad Garu. He has a qualified C.A. in 2003 and C.A. in 2009, securing all India 7th rank at intermediate level and 5th rank at a final level. He is also a qualified LLB and a qualified Diploma in Information Systems Audit. And presently, he has a partner with a CRP and Associate LLP and Chartered Accountant. Currently, he is a founder and mentor of the startups. And uh, he is also pursuing advanced management program on business analytics. And uh, he is also come. Committee member of AP State Grievance Redditors Committee, GST, and chairman of Indirect Tax Committee. He served as a lead consultant on return of basis to Andhra Pradesh commercial taxes. Practiced as a partner in Uma Maheshwar Rao and Co. since 2016 to 2018. He's also selected as a faculty of GST under faculty application program. He has an audit experience in performed central statutory audit of public sector undertakings and public sector banks like Oriental Banks of Commerce and Andhra Bank. He has uh, conducted different diploma, different departmental programs and uh, trainings. Uh, and uh, he has uh, delivered more than 200 seminars at various locations of uh, in Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. He has uh, conducted a weekly series under name Quest on application of accounting standards for 23 weeks at ITC Limited, Kuntur. Uh, thank you, sir. We will welcome to the session. Sir, now that uh, the session is handed out to you too. Yeah, yeah. Take up the Thanks team. a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak to budding accountants and uh, Thanks for the introduction. Uh, may I now get introduced with the members of this uh, gathering, sir, uh, who have gathered here. What is their present? Uh, uh, sir, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that I can are, my talk properly. Basically, yes, yes. Basically, they're all, you know, mostly the commerce graduates, MBAs, 
VCOM, MCOM, and uh, this 21 years to 55 years persons also, the housewives also are there. Mm -hmm. Housewives and uh, who are all who are working as accountants, they are also the so employees and then this uh, and employees all the, the so under this IPA also. we give technical training. Yeah, we give a, ours is called as a substitute for working experience. We mm -hmm. train them like a practical accounting, practical GST, practical income tax, practical payroll accounting, practical finance, and then computerized accounting on this ERP package. So that uh, our people have been working in, in all, actually many of our students are assistants for chartered accountants, cast accountants, company secretaries, and uh, industrial organizations, MNC companies, you know, in the foreign also. So what do we take it as a, so it is a global accountant, like they can work anywhere in the world. Is, it any, uh, is there any physical office or uh, this is? Sir, it is online office? and physical office, both are there. Okay. Okay. The people, because now who introduced you, she she's from Vijag. I mean, she has come from Vijag and she is working for now TCS mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, because our, we have online and offline both. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Nice, sir. Nice, sir. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, good morning, all. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Very good. Good morning, sir. So, I'm very happy to interact with you all. And uh, 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 this is my this is an extempore talk, and uh, I'm not carrying any PPT today. The topic is uh, such, and uh, in fact, the title. I loved the title a lot. Uh, and this is first time I am talking on that title, The Duties of a Good Corporate Accountant. Okay. My talk will be around uh, 45 to 50 minutes. We'll, we'll end it by 11 o'clock like. So in this time, we will look into various aspects and dimensions, what makes us into a very good corporate accountant. Okay. So I leave certain thoughts which you can think on forever and which we can uh, uh, nurture on that forever. See, fundamentally, under the accounting, we have got two stages, so to say. You might have seen the books titled Bookkeeping and Accounting. What is the difference between bookkeeping and accounting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So whoever is not, uh, just mute yourself, please, uh, so that uh, not to catch the cross talk. Hmm. Sir, I'm muting all the mics, and oh. you can yeah, unmute yeah. and talk, sir, please. That will be good, but please unmute yourself at any point of time, and you can intervene. It's a completely interactive session. Sir, please uh, unmute the mic, Andy. Super Sargar. Me, Michael. Hello. Sir. Yeah, I, I, I unmute. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No. So, what is the difference between bookkeeping and accounting? Now, if you see, the accounting standards are renamed as reporting standards. The new accounting standards, they are being called IFRS. International Financial Reporting Standards. So there is another dimension to accounting that is reporting. Why is it so? We'll discuss. And then you might have also observed while we are doing our graduation and all, accountancy falls under an arts college. Physics, chemistry will fall under a science college. What is the art of accounting? Why is it not a science? Why the accounting is an art? Does that mean that there are no rules, that there are no scientific uh, processes and methods which define the way it has to be done? Or it is open to the artist? If we are an arts college and we are doing the study as an art, then we are also an artist. What is the artistry about the accounting? Okay. If we think on these few concepts, Automatically, our duties of a good corporate accounting accountant will be very clear. Okay. See, what happens is, before we understand the duties, 
we must understand who uses our work to whom we are serving who are the beneficiaries of our work so if we prepare accounts it is for whom is it for the board of directors is it for the shareholders is it for the government is it for the investors is it for the bankers okay so you must first keep in mind to whom we are serving who are our consumers of the work so if you write accounts if you prepare accounts through some software or manual or whatever what is the end result and whom we are serving and why are for what purpose they will be using our work so if we got this dimension very clear then our work the quality of the work will increase a lot and what is the purpose of this activity of accounting is it to know the profit at the end of the year or is it to enable the management to take decisions or is it to decide the amount of taxes to be paid to government so where do we fall what is the purpose of the whole activity of recording day book and then general ledger ledgerizing that and then preparing a trial balance and all of that i know you are all good at or i believe you are all uh, uh, completed your technical part of accounting okay you are fairly knowledgeable with the process of how the accounts are prepared right from day book to the last financial statements along with the notes and disclosures and therefore i am not going into the technicalities of that but I, my talk is mostly on a macro view on the philosophical part of it on the dimensional part of it it helps in decision making and uh, knowing the economic uh, growth of the company uh, very good yes exactly okay so very good very good for the nice for the input inputs first thing in the accounting there is lot of freedom in which we can create our accounting heads or prepare our disclosure requirements so all the disclosure requirements are the minimum disclosure requirements so therefore over and above that you can prepare okay so government is not printing the chart of accounts and giving us and asking us to use only this chart of accounts there is no such requirement okay it is up to us it is up to the accountant to create his own chart of accounts so whether you want to have one item for all the expenses office expenses one head or you want to put multiple heads like traveling telephone or you want to put even more detailed accounting heads like traveling within traveling unit 1 within traveling unit 2 within traveling unit 4 sir super sir karu just i wanted to Uh, I mean, interact here. Yeah. The first class for our students is about that heads of accounts only. Heads of. They have been, they have been because we have been, you know, training them. And uh, heads of accounts are different from different organizations. So yeah. how they have so all those things. So that's yeah. the reason I'm just just happy to say to you that we start. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Adds a lot to my my yeah, yeah. Uh, course of talk so just, also. Yeah. so therefore as rightly um, uh, added supplemented by prakash ji what happens is it is up to the accountant's discretion and decision judgment to to decide how many accounts are to be there how many gls have to be there so therefore there is a decision making involved and that is what is making accounting an art it's a scientific art not a very loose art but it is a scientific art so therefore we must strike a balance the gls should not be too wide or the gls should not be too aggregated if they are too aggregated then we are missing on the detail if there are too detailed like if you have one item for everything like uh, uh, food brackets the name of the food also food bracket lunch food bracket dinner shall we have such a detailed chart of accounts meaningless or can we have one ledger account for all the office expenses meaningless 
Okay. So therefore, to what granularity we want to divide our accounts into? That is one important decision we have to take. Okay. So for us to take, we must know the geographical spread of the organization, the activity, the, the, the operational spread of the organization, and also the size of the organization. Okay. So based on all of these, we must decide a proper chart of accounts. So that is our first step. To decide our proper chart of accounts is our first step. And initially I raised a question, what is the difference between bookkeeping and accounting? Okay. Bookkeeping is a simple activity of recording facts. So therefore, if you are writing every expenditure, you are recording your expenditure, every payment you are recording, every receipt you are recording in some statement, whether it is day book or sales register or purchase register, that activity is called bookkeeping. So bookkeeping is a very limited, straightforward activity of recording a fact as a fact. But then, of course, it is a first and the elementary step, but then will it serve the end purpose? in its own no because it is too much of a data we have to summarize them we have to aggregate them so what are all the steps we are aggregating the day book where we record our facts as facts we are ledgerizing them what is ledgerizing ledgerizing is collecting all the transactions that belong to a ledger at one place so there is one commonality if you take a day book, all the entries of the day, irrespective of their character and trans nature, will come in a seriatim in a chronological order. But if you go to the ledger, what happens is all the transactions of single nature. So if you go to sales ledger, what we what we record in a sales ledger, everything off sales. So the characteristic is sales. We pick up only those transactions that are of that sales ledger. Okay. So that is what is called ledgerizing. So ledgerizing is a form of classifying and aggregating. <clears throat> so by ledgerizing, what we do is we will classify things and we will also aggregate the things. Why are we classifying and aggregating? What is the purpose? Why are we classifying and why are we aggregating? Aggregating is for uh, general uh, ledger purpose, sir. And I don't know. Yeah, it is to synthesize things and to abridge them into a meaningful form. See, if somebody says that, what is a traveling expenditure for the month? When will you be happy if you get an answer in single number that the total is some 2 lakhs? Or if they keep on saying each and every transaction of that ledger, which will serve more purpose. At the end of the day, we require the aggregates. Okay, we want to summarize the data. So the purpose of accounting is to summarize into a meaningful manner. That is what is accounting. So if you can say bookkeeping is concerned with data, accounting is concerned with information. What is information? What is data? You all know in the computer science, what is the difference between information and data? Data is a bulk of a bulk of all the transactions, all the facts. Whereas an information is processed data that gives a meaningful insight. That is very important. So when we are ledgerizing the day book, we are, we are trying to give a meaningful insight. So we are bringing everything that belongs to one ledger to one place. Of course, computers, they do it automatically. Therefore, we are not very conscious of the process. But if you write your accounts manually, you will be more conscious of the process. Okay. So ledgerizing is a very, very important step of classifying and aggregating the data. Okay. Where we get a meaningful, where we get a meaningful insight. Okay. Then there is another another uh, fine step, another finer step. Okay, what is that another finer step we are concerned is when we are preparing the accounting, we are not recording 
the transactions that have had actually happened. See, if a transaction has to happen, there has to be a monetary movement. Yes or no? So if you make a payment, there is cash outflow. If you make a receipt, there is a cash inflow. So bookkeeping is concerned with these monetary flows, actual transactions. But accounting goes beyond this. Okay. See, there is no monetary flow, but there is a fact that your fixed assets got depreciated. Yes or no? By the usage of time, by the passage of time, by the usage of the asset over time, will the asset depreciate or not? You all know depreciating, depreciation accounting and all. So what happens is with the passage of the time, the value of the fixed asset had come down. Is there any monetary flow inward, outward? No, but for you to summarize and calculate the profit of the year, we have to record that as well. So this depreciation, will it fall under bookkeeping or accounting? Anybody put it in a chat box. That is easy. So it falls under accounting. Accounting. You got the point? So accounting is recording or summarizing the transactions to give a meaningful insight. So it goes beyond bookkeeping. Normally the data entry, the bookkeeping, the fact as a fact will be done by junior people of the team. Normally the accountant and the accountant will be of a senior. So just to give it in an organizational framework for us to easy to relate and understand I am giving the technology. Okay. So similarly, I want to say, I want to record the profit or I want to know or arrive at the profit of an year. Okay. So there will be certain accrual entries. What are the accrual entries? I have made a fixed deposit. The interest is accruing on the fixed deposit. The banker has not yet given me. I have not received the interest, but there is interest in my name. If not today, tomorrow, I will receive that interest. So though there is no monetary flow, the fact that my investment value had gone up there is some income that had arisen over that, that had accrued over that, that we will record. Okay, this is an accounting job. Okay, so bookkeeping is concerned with facts. Accounting is concerned with the truth. What is the difference between a fact and a truth? A little philosophical Sunday morning. Okay, just think of that. Facts are simple happenings. Truth could be something inside. Truth need not be explicit. We have to find the truth. Truth is beyond facts. So accounting is concerned with the truth, the true and fairness. So in order to know the true and fairness, we will record something where there is no physical form. For a depreciation, there is no physical form. Have you paid any money? No. Have you received any money? No. Is there any other party? No. But we are recognizing the fact on our own that my fixed assets have come down on their value. Similarly, I have certain debtors. I have to receive monies. Let us say I have to receive one lakh dollars. Okay. So I have to receive one lakh dollars. I have recorded this one lakh dollars at the past exchange rate, at the prevailing exchange rate when the transaction had happened. Let us say at that time, dollar was 72. Now the dollar had reached up to some 78 or 80. Okay. So there is an appreciation in the amount receivable. Have you really received the money? No. But the fact that what you can receive had increased on its own. So we have to record this. This is a classic example of accounting. Okay. So now, therefore, you are seeing the art part of accounting. Why accounting is an art? Okay. We have to catch the truth of every transaction. Truth may not be very simple and apparent. So if you look at debtors, okay, you have to receive one lakh rupees from some other person. But that some other person is not in touch. Their whereabouts are not known. You may receive the money, you may not receive the money. 
there is a judgment involved okay he is not picking up the phone we have written mails he is not responding so what is the truth what is a fact can somebody put it in the chat the fact is you have to receive the truth is you may not receive yes or no the fact is you have sold goods yes there is an evidence you have to receive money yes there is an evidence you have to receive the money now what is the reality behind that are you going to receive the money or will will it turn into a bad debt what is bad debt what is your most likely estimation put it in the chat i couldn't see any messages <laughs> okay the reality is the probability of receiving the money is very little yeah it comes under doubtful debt lakshmi priya yeah thanks for the message and the response yeah so how much of bad debt you have to record it can be half of the payment himabindu now who will decide whether it is half or 25% or 75% how to make an estimation how much you may get it is future telling fortune telling it is very easy to say we sold 100 kg easy they were sold for 100 rupees easy 100 into 100 some x rupees 1000 easy how much amount we have to receive factually easy how much money we may realize it involves what estimation okay so how to estimate the title is how to become a corporate accountant so therefore corporate is expected to be of a good size not a very small entity okay so therefore how do you become a very good corporate accountant you must have lot of ancillary information ancillary information that doesn't form part of accounting directly but it will help it indirectly like what is your average experience in the past what is your average bad debt in this line of activity or in this class of demand uh, customers in this class of product let us say i am a very big corporate i am dealing with b2b b2c in the b2c segment in this particular area in the fmcg product in the refrigerator segment the average bad debt is x percentage and how i am arriving at this x percentage i must have lot of statistical analysis business analysis i must collect the data of the last 5 years 10 years i must also collect the industry average yeah very good i must also see the this particular customers past record awesome okay so based on all of these things we will arrive at a number 25% may realize 75% may realize okay so that is accounting so accounting is preparing a true and fair view of the performance or the status of the company performance of the company is profit or loss financial condition of the company everyone wants to know financial position of the company is a balance sheet mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah kindly mute yourself uh, there is some cross talk which is disturbing so you got the point right so wherever you have to find the truth by making an estimation by making a summarization by making an uh, uh, by understanding the changes in the value so there could be an increase in the value there could be some decrease in the value so let us talk about some increases in the value what are all the some so what are all the uh, most likely increases in the value of the assets like debtors denominated in foreign currency they may go up creditors that are denominated in foreign currency and the foreign currency value the exchange value has come down therefore the creditors have come down okay now similarly you have certain fixed assets and uh, let us say i am having a uh, very very good uh, um, theater room i am into media business okay 
I purchased certain special cameras and all. They are useful for 10 years. Now there is a change in the technology and I am not using that camera anymore. Now I got into some other digital camera. Now I got into some other uh, uh, hand handheld small camera. Now what happens to my media room that I have built? Whether there is useful life or not? Yes or no? Whether there is a useful life? Can you use that over next uh, six, seven years? Yes, you can use. But are you predicting any actual usage? No, because of change of technology, I have moved on to another technology. So because I have moved on to another technology, will this asset be any more useful? Will this asset be uh, any more useful? No, sir. It will be obsolete. Say yeah. obsolete technology. It is an obsolete technology. Then, then what to do with obsolete technology? Do you uh, do you do you depreciate it? Do you amortize it, or do you impair it, or do you write it off? I used various words. Depreciation is different. Amortization is different. Write-off is different. Impairment is different. Okay. So therefore, when to use what, how much to use, that is what makes us an accountant. Okay. Yeah. The actual role of an accountant in a CA is this. Well, Sirisha, there's a message. Yeah. This is an actual role. So why do chartered accountants debate a lot, fight a lot? When we are simply recording the bank transaction, copying it down and then recording it, then where is a fight? See, when there is a need to take a decision, when there is a discretion involved, when there is a subjectivity involved, when there is an opinion making involved, then there will be a debate. Then multiple views are positive. So what makes a uh, CA in a corporate how is he different from a junior accountant? <coughs> what is the difference between a first level accountant and a chartered accountant? What is so chartered about him? What is the change? This is the change. Okay. So therefore, whether it is useful, so the management says, no, 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 we will use it somewhere else. Or we may sell it off to our uh, next level uh, thing. Or we may take smaller films with this and we will take bigger uh, serials and bigger uh, movies with the other, other, other camera. Okay. So there is an estimation involved. How to handle estimations? Okay. Whenever there is estimation, there is no one correct answer. There are multiple correct answers. Okay. And there is a lot of estimation involved. See, I, get, I gave one use case. I gave one practical use case. What is that? Bad debt from a debtor. How do you estimate how much money you will realize? You may feel that 75,000 is realizable, but we may realize full 1 lakh. You may feel that you will realize 80,000 80, minimum out of 1 lakh, but he may abscond and he may become insolvent and then some other liquidator may give you 25 paisa, means 25 rupees, 25,000. Okay, your estimation of bad debt may go wrong. Okay, anyway, coming back to this example, Depreciation is depreciation is a methodical process of reducing the value of a fixed asset over a time. It is in the usual course of business. So I purchased this asset with 1 lakh. I estimate the life to be 10 years. So therefore, every year 10,000 rupees straight line or maybe 10% on a return down. That is called depreciation. Okay. What is amortization? Amortization means distributing the value over years. It may look very similar to depreciation, but there is a subtle, slight difference. You must pick up the shade. So mostly in case of intangibles, what happens is if there are rights, if there are good, if there is goodwill, which we, we have purchased, okay, or if there is any software license that we purchase, the software license that we purchase, we feel that we may use it over three years or four years. So what we do, we distribute it over four years. That is called amortization. 
Okay. Now, there is another way that is called impairment. What is impairment? If you feel that you are not going to use the asset anymore because of technological change, because of market change, or because of business plan change, because of product line change, there could be any reason for the change. But if you feel that you are not going to use this asset anymore, the asset will not produce so much of the economic benefit as it is there in the books. Now, I purchased an asset with 1 lakh. I'm taking 1 lakh for an easy example. So, uh, two years I depreciated 10,000, 10,000. Now, my, in my books, it is at 80,000. But I feel that there is change of technology. I'm not going to use this asset anymore. I have already shifted to the another uh, uh, technology. So, therefore, what I feel is this asset I will not be using. So, therefore, it will not be producing anything. It will not be of any use to the business. Maybe if I have to sell, I have to sell it in a second-hand market. It may fetch 20,000. So from 80,000 to strike 20,000 fall, it is called impairment. It is an estimation again. So from 80,000, we are downgrading the asset to 20,000. Entries, you all know. I'm not going into entry. So we credit the asset and we write it to profit and loss account. Charge it off to profit and loss account. Is it an estimation or a factor? It's an estimation. So you said 20,000, but somebody came and offered 30,000 and you sold it for 30,000. Then you will make a profit in the next year. Okay. Because you estimated from 80,000 to 20, you downgraded it in your mind, but then in reality, it had fetched more. So therefore you may have a profit in the later year. That is a different story. So similarly, there are numerous examples. If you take a balance sheet and keep this in mind, why is accounting an art? You keep this question. Okay. What is a fact and what is a truth? You look at a balance sheet. You, you do one thing. You download 50, 60 balance sheets from the internet. Okay. And you go through each of the accounting head and you study the notes of accounts. People feel that accounting will end from balance sheet, profit and loss account, two, three pages. They are not important. The notes that they follow if you see the balance sheet of any uh, reasonable sized entity, it will run into 50, 60 pages. Why 50, 60 pages when balance sheet is a one page? What is so much to say? That is what I said. The accounting world is moving. From book, bookkeeping, we came to accounting. From accounting, we are now moving to reporting. It is not accounting standards. It is reporting standards now. IFRS, not IFAS. So the end goal of accounting is to communicate. It is not to write the papers for yourself and then keep it with you. No. Why you are preparing the accounts? To communicate to someone. Who is that someone? It could be shareholder. It could be government. It could be tax authority. Or it could be investor, banker, anybody. Okay. So this part, we have to keep it in mind. Your work is not for one person. Your work is to serve to multiple people. So therefore, how much of chart of accounts, how much of granularity you have to put it in a chart of accounts? How much of data you have to maintain? Okay, I'll go into the granularity a little later. Okay, but then you must understand the purpose of accounting is to bring out the truth. Okay, so there could be valuation differences. There could be timing differences. I already explained timing difference by means of accrual. So if you take a fixed deposit, the interest will be received maybe after three months. But the interest is accruing every day, even on a Sunday. Even today, interest has got no holidays. It will run 365 days. So if you close your books of accounts for 31st March or the quarter end or the month end, whatever, you must account for not bookkeeping. You must account for whatever the accruals that had happened till the day on which we are preparing our accounts. Got the point? So all of these accruals. Similarly, let us take another case, inventory. What is inventory? Your stock. Okay. It could be raw material. It could be finished goods. It could be work in progress. It could be stores. It could be consumables. There are These are all the various types of inventory that a corporate will have. Now, how to account for inventory, how to carry or how to recognize. If, if you are, I believe you know accounting standards. Have you 
have you discussed about accounting standards in your regular course no sir yeah accounting is driven by certain standards which are issued by institute of chartered accountants of india so every entity every entity shall follow that accounting standard and it is a duty of the chartered accountant to see that these accounting standards are followed so if the accounting standards are not followed the chartered accountant will show that or will will report them in his report auditor's report so what are these accounting standards they provide the rules or the principles sometimes principles sometimes rules what is the difference between a principle and a rule anybody in the chat so if it is a one to one physical seminar or an a kind sir, of a, a rule can have a rule can have exceptions or a rule can be changed but a principle is absolute it cannot be changed it cannot be refuted yeah 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 maybe i think uh it is slightly different or opposite rather we will look into it when it is a rule the rule maker is giving no choice okay when it is a rule the rule provides in a quantitative assertive terms that you have to pay this x rupees you have to pay 5 rupees for every kilometer or you have to run on third lane that is a rule you have to drive safe is a principle so principle is at a macro level rule is at a micro level okay so if i say follow slm method it's a rule but if i say follow any method but it should be correct method good method it should show the appropriate decrease in the value based on the actual usage following that you can follow anything then what i am saying is a principle okay so be truthful be honest is a principle submit your uh, exercises submit your assignments by 5th of september is a rule okay sometimes accounting standards provide for rules sometimes accounting standards provide for principles so when they give a principle they say the end goal and leave the freedom to you so in order that the end goal is reached you can follow anything that you want so principles give us freedom within that principle of course in rule there is absolutely no freedom okay in rule it is not what we, what for we are doing but what we are doing what we have to do is also mentioned anyway as a good corporate accountant the very very important thing you have to do is you have to go through the accounting standards okay of course maybe in your office there may be a qualified chartered accountant or the head of the accounting team or a ca or a cfo kind of a thing okay they will be uh, taking care of that but if we know why they are or what they are thinking of what they are thinking of is coming from the accounting standards okay based on the size of entity in india now we have got two sets of accounting standards one is called as which is accounting standard and another is called ind as ind as that is uh, that is in fact an international standard adapted to india for all listed companies for all turnover greater than 250 crore companies and all that 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 second set of accounting standards which means ind as is applicable okay. if you go through these accounting standards they will discuss in elaborate on everything like depreciation there is an accounting standard okay foreign exchange conversions there is an accounting standard as 11 employee benefits how to record employee benefits how to record lease transactions there is as 19 okay so you may not be because it is too technical in nature and it requires lot of study that is what chartered accountants study over 3 or 4 years of time but i suggest every one of you to go through the gist of the accounting standard summary of the accounting standard or in an abridged form there are a lot of books available over net or over physical form so if you go through the accounting standards they will provide the principles and the rules of accounting what to do what not to do how to do i i said estimates so there is an full standard on estimates how to make an estimate so we have discussed about bad debt estimation we have discussed about impairment estimation 
So there will be a lot of estimations that an accountant has to do. So how to do an estimate? There is a standard. Okay. So therefore, we have to be very thorough with these standards. Okay. So these standards, if you go through them, uh, they provide the objective for which we will do that. And broadly, if you understand the standards, there are uh, one, two, three stages. First one is called recognition. Second one is called measurement. Third one is called carrying. Very, very important dimensions of, if you take any standard, broadly these standards can be classified into these three stages. Okay. Recognition means when to record in the books. Okay. Let us say my company delivers windmills. You know windmills, right? Very big uh, blades will be rotating to the wind and then they produce electricity. So what I did is I have to sell a windmill. Let us say I am some Suzilan or some other uh, entity. Now I have prepared the windmill. I have delivered the windmill in parts. They have to be assembled there. I have received 80% of the money also. Can I record it as a sales? I received money. I delivered a part, but the windmill is not assembled still. Now, how much of sales I can write? Zero sales or the amount of money that I have received or the amount of work that I have performed. Sale advance is a balance sheet item. So Srinivas did. Sale advance is a balance sheet item. I'm talking about recognition of income in the profit and loss account. Advance we will record anyway. See, advance recording is a fact. It goes in bookkeeping. So the moment we receive money, we have to record it. We cannot uh, stay without recording it. So when to recognize sales? That is called recognition. Okay. When to record recognition? So Shirisha ji, you, got, you are getting right. The exact role of a CA is this. We received sales advance. Already it was recorded in the books. Now how much sales to record is a decision. Because the assembly is not made. Now let us say assembly is also made, but it is not uh, connected, integrated to the grid and it is not generating electricity at. Can we record sales? Now let us say the windmill is generic, um, installed, inaugurated, working fine. So let us say I, have, I sold the windmill for one crore. But as per the agreement, I must give a support AMC of next five years without any money. So what is my sales now? Can I record one crore as my sales? Have I earned one crore? Because my responsibility is to saru this windmill for next five years. For which I may be, I may be spending some another... 15 lakhs or 10 lakhs or so. So shall I record my sales for 1 crore or shall I receive record my sales for only 90 lakhs and keep 10 lakhs for future sale, future uh, AMCs? Yeah. Once service of customer starts, it is considered as sales. Now, is it a principle or a rule? Who said that? So for that, we have to visit the accounting standards. Okay. Now you got the role of the accounting standard. Now you got the role of a chartered accountant. Now you got the role of the auditor who signs the balance sheet. They are concerned with these items. So what the accounting standard says is when all the risks and rewards of the transactions are passed on, then we can record. That is what the language. So what are all the risks? What are all the rewards? when they have passed on, how to decide this. So this is where lot of manipulation is possible. Lot of correct incorrect is possible. 
lot of subjectivity is involved and we have to gather a lot of facts. Okay. So broadly, I'm not going into discuss each and every accounting standard, but I'm, I'm just giving a taste of everything. I'm just giving a taste of everything in the buffet. And I'm saying, what is the way forward? What are your higher studies? What are your next? I'm, ta I'm talking about that. So what the standard says is that when the risks and rewards are transferred, so have you commissioned whether the machine is running and what are all your risks involved in that? So because you have an obligation to serve the windmill for next five years, you must keep something for that. Now, how much should I keep and how much I shall record as sales? Okay. Let us say in my agreement, I have said that once you deliver the stock physically, 50% of the transaction is done. Risks and rewards are transferred to that extent, irrepatriably, ir, uh, without any recourse. So therefore, I can record my sales. But let us say, so I can record my sales of 50 lakh. But I received an amount of 70. Then what I will do? 50, I will put it in profit and loss account. Balance 20, I will put it in balance. Because I received something over and above what I can recognize as sales. Now, on the contrary, let us say, based on the agreement, based on the performance, I performed up to 50 lakh. I received a money of only 30 lakh. So what I will do? I'll record a sales of 50. 20 I have to receive, I'll show 20 lakhs as a data. You're getting it right? Okay. Now let us say I performed the whole, I received, I am at to receive one crore. So yeah, future provision made for future service purpose. The very, very important point. Shall I, now what happens is there are two ways to approach this problem. Now the windmill is one crore. Can I record one crore as sales and record an expenditure on the provisions side? Expenditure side, keep 10 lakhs as a provision. So if I do like this, my profit is correct. One crore minus 10 lakh, 90, 90 lakh only I'm recording. But my turnover, my appearance of turnover is going big. So my turnover will increase. Or should I record my sales only at 90? Both are one and the same when it comes to the profit. But in terms of the disclosure that we are making, the top line is a, 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 top line is a little over boasted. So shall I record my sales as 90 lakh? Means after deducting the provision, record the sales or show the sales at gross amount on the right hand side of the profit and loss account. And on the left hand side of the profit and loss account, record some 10 lakhs as a provision, which is correct. So you're looking into it, so fine the things are becoming, so granular, so subtle. So what the standard says is, if you have an obligation to perform, which is not yet performed, that is not even your sales. Okay, so what happens if you record one crore as sale and 10 lakh as a provision, next year you will be doing so much but then you will not have any income because you already made a provision you will meet out of that provision, which is not correct. So therefore, your sales, your performance of this year is only 90 lakh. Your performance of next year and the next year is 10 lakh. We have to measure the performance. How do we measure the performance? We cannot say we performed one crore in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, I am idle. Is it correct? So if you record full sales and make a provision, there is a problem. So you must remove the provision, keep apart, set apart the provision, record the sales at a lesser number, show the sales at a lesser number, so that the balance will come as a sales in the later years, which you feel as more fair. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. I'm Sirisha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you are giving service in the next year, suppose this year we made a sale, mm -hmm. but whatever we are providing to the customer next year is a service. We cannot okay. consider that as a sale, no, sir? Showing yeah, sale, the provision of 10, 10 lakh. Sale, sale means sale of service also. Not only sale of goods, sale of service is also a sale. In okay. a sense, turnover, gross turnover, turnover. Right. 
Okay. So turnover is not of goods. Turnover is of services as well. Okay. So whenever I say sale or whenever I say turnover, it includes of services also. Okay. Or put it in even more general words, performance. So when we perform, we get revenue. So what is a performance of year two, year three? Do you say that there is no performance in year two, year three? Yes, no. There is a performance in year two, year three. We sold and then we are serving. So the nature is there is a there is a sale of good in the first year. There is a rendering of service in the later years. Okay. So this is how things will turn out to be. So from simple recording to understanding the reality behind it. Sir, sir, one, 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 more, few, yeah. one more doubt. Yeah. Suppose in the main main uh, good, there are yeah. sub-parts. Sub if they sell them as a part of service in the coming years, those are also being considered as sales. Which is that? Suppose we are providing a, a repair or the uh, some sub, sub parts for the goods. Are they also be considered as sales? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can consider that also as sales. And what we have discussed so far is an 200 page accounting standard, which will take at least um, two, three weeks to discuss. Okay. Lot of things. So very, very interesting it will be. Certain spares are given mandatorily. See, when you when you purchase a car, how many tires you get? Four or five? Five. Spare five. tire also. Okay. Yeah. So what is provided along with the machine and what cannot be used with anything else other than that machine? Can we consider, so if I purchase the car, will I write, I purchased cars, fixed asset, and I remove that one step, one, one additional tire that I'm going to get, and I record it as an inventory? Is it correct? You're getting me? You're getting, you got my question? Yes. When you purchase a car, where do you record? Is it a fixed asset or is it a fixed asset for car plus four tires? One tire you record in your inventory as a store or spare or a... What is fair? Total we consider, sir. Okay. Now, later, if you purchase two more tires, hmm. that two more tires, are they fixed asset or an, are they inventory? Inventory. Fixed asset. Fixed asset. So the two tires you purchased separately, will you provide any depreciation? Yes, sir. Huh? Two tires that you purchased and keep it in your stockyard. Safety. For safety, you purchased, you got 100 cars. So therefore, no, you purchased no. some 5 or 10. No, no, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, no, sir. no depreciation. Okay. But, okay. but so it, 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 will, it will not be used. Yeah. Sir. But for fifth tire. It will not be used. Got, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. But the fifth tire you got along with the car purchase, are you depreciating it or not? No, 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 no sir. sir. It is not no, working sir. for the... No, when it, it is, is part of the cost of the car, you are unknowingly depreciating the fifth tire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no sir. The, the fifth yes, tire is yes. not depreciating. Depreciation, yes, because sir. It, but it, because it is not used. Can the you are not are using. See, you are not using. I agree that. Yes, I but four tires are using. Asset register, you recorded the whole value of the car. Whole value, yes, right, which right, includes sir. the value of the fifth tire. Yes or oh, no? Oh, oh. Yes, 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 providing sir. depreciation on the whole car. Yes, sir. So the tire that came yes, along sir. with the car, you are treating it as fixed asset or inventory? Fixed asset, fixed asset. But if you purchase a fixed tire on a separate individual standalone basis, you are considering it as inventory. Depreciation okay. in the value. Yes, yes, yes sir. Called, this Absolutely. concept is called capital spares. Capital, capital spares. Oh, okay. That is the concept. Okay, okay, sir. That is the concept. So capital spare is a spare that comes along with the fixed asset and can be used only along with the fixed asset and cannot be put to use for other. It cannot be used generically like petrol. You can use for anywhere. anywhere. It is not a consumable. That is called a capital spare. A capital spare is never an inventory. A capital spare is a part of the fixed asset. Capital spare shall also be depreciated. That is what the standard says. Depreciation in the value of assets. Yeah, yeah. 
so the moment you are treating along with the car you are unknowingly putting depreciation okay so it is going to profit and loss account through the channel of depreciation whereas a new tire that you purchase that is going to the profit and loss account based on actual usage okay so coming back to the question shirisha raised what happens is based on all of these things so similarly i sold the windmill and then amc i am entering into a separate agreement then the story is different if it is an integrated one then the story is different if they have an year marked arrangement then the story is different if i have a back to back arrangement i will sell i will sign for amc but amc i will not do i have a subcontractor a franchisee or some other agency to whom i will give it back to back whatever amc they take care of then the story is different so therefore the story changes with every change in the fact of course when we start the basic of accounting we are more concerned with recording of facts as i said i am repeating it just to make the distinction very very clear and imprinted on the mind but when it, when it translates to accounting we have to look through the transaction so for that we have to study the accounting standards for that we have to study the agreement for that we have to study the industry practice how everybody is doing then only we will be able to decide on all of these things so therefore so far we may feel like what is so artistic about it there is a transaction we are recording it and we are summarizing it automatically we will get profit and loss it is not that easy if it is that easy then this this financial world could not be this this way okay then the accounting annual report the scams and all will not be of this scale okay so you got a dimension right therefore you have to think the next step okay uh maybe with this certain basic principles i'll come back before i end the talk certain basic principles is know the balance of level of detail the level of detailing should not be too broad you cannot have 1000 uh, gls in where 100 100 is a good number okay when you have a gl opened up for every item based on every class then it will be very difficult to summarize at the same time if you are having at a very too aggregated level it is also difficult and we have to while we are framing our chart of accounts while we are having our party ledger when we are uh, framing our sales ledger we must know all the end requirements i give one classic case there is one class 44 in tax audit which is made mandatory from this accounting year for this reporting year tax audit was made mand uh, class 44 was made mandatory what class 44 was asking is the break up of the expenditure based on whether the other person is a registered under gst or not registered under gst now most of the accountants are not able to give because they have not recorded this head whether the other person is registered or not registered composite dealer that they have not maintained but today that requirement have come it is not possible because they have clubbed everything into one see the simple thing is if you club everything into one it is very difficult to segregate if you keep them separate it is easy to mix okay so therefore tomorrow the company sat will ask some other requirement what are the dues to msme what are the dues to other than msme what are the dues to registered gst parties not registered gst party so how many ledgers you have to keep how many uh, sub ledgers similarly we may have segment wise reporting similarly we may have account well, uh, location wise reporting similarly we may have subsidiary wise or uh, joint venture wise reporting when it comes to consolidated financial statements so the level of granularity the lod the level of detail is one very important decision okay if you if you are not clear keep it things separate keep things granular so that you can mix it up at any point of time once they got mixed up it is very difficult to set them apart this is one golden rule okay then two collect as much more information as possible whether you may use or not use it is very difficult to go back okay three make the transactions narrations very very clear okay 
then four have a set process whenever you aggregate you should aggregate in one particular style the style is up to you you can choose the style but there should be some set style okay four know your end purpose okay what are all the disclosures under schedule 3 of the companies act what are all the disclosures under the icds of income tax act what are all the disclosures in 3cd of income tax act you must first visit the end goal then you will know where to start okay nobody can set on a journey unless their destination is clear at least known at least aspired for so therefore have a very clear goal on the end the end post which we are aiming for otherwise you may not make this accounting journey proper okay and know the difference between fact and the truth which i have already repeated it enough number of times fact is very apparent simple straightforward and event whereas truth could be very very judgmental very very subjective very very uh, discretionary and very tough to take at times and there could be multiple truths because there is lot of estimation and subjectivity involved okay then based on your level whether you are a junior accountant or a senior accountant or an head of the accounting division in the balance sheet and then finalizing heading uh, um, coordinating with the statutory auditor or you yourself or the person who is going to sign the balance sheet as a director based on that your level of knowledge of the accounting standards and the regulatory mechanism has to be more okay so it's a, it's a very long journey um, nice i think i crossed my time also by a bit so i thank all of you for the very beautiful participation through chat and the uh, voice in the limited time see it is like a ocean so which cup of uh, water we may pick up will change okay so it's an extempore talk it is not limited to one particular depreciation and the technical standard like that so hope your time is well spent thank you yes and thank with this i i i give it back to prakash yes sir, yes sir. thanks sir. thanks a lot and then uh, all the uh, you know they have got a what is a special knowledge as an accountant you know all this budding accountants whatever that so we train in this course as a sort of a platform like sort of a fundamentals and all like it. so now they know what are the special knowledge they require to excel in uh, excel as accountants sir so nice of you all the participants please unmute the mics and give him a big hand so let it is thank you for it please thank you thank you thank you a lot thank you for sharing good information thank you a lot thank you for sharing thank you thank you for sharing thank you thank you for sharing thank you thank you thank you sir thank you looking forward thank you thank you